Back in the early 1990s, communist icons were toppling as Eastern European countries broke away from the Soviet Union. It was a perfect scenario for CHF to do what it does best, build opportunities for countries like Poland and its people. Having the opportunity to work in Poland was enormously exciting to be part of those uh, tides of change in the world at the time. And it was also very important for CHF drawing on its co-op roots. Poland today is a place where old and new merge seamlessly. Now a member of the European Union, it has seen inflation wane, exports boom, and foreign investment come rushing in. But back in the early 1990s, Poland needed help. With funding from USAID, CHF took up the challenge and for close to a decade helped broker a co-op housing program for Poles hungry to own their own. More than 100 co-op units went up in Białystok, a city of 300,000 in northeast Poland. Electrician and Solidarity member Zbigniew Zajilko heard about CHF's project from a telephone operator. She told me about a new co-op and that the meeting was taking place the next day, so I went to the meeting. At that time, he and his wife Orshula and their two daughters were living in a 250-square-foot, poorly insulated flat in a high-rise made of prefabricated concrete blocks. And crime was a problem in these one-size-fits-all buildings. Now they live in a CHF-built co-op they help design. It has three bedrooms, two baths, a small backyard, and good heating and insulation. The CHF co-op site on this day looks like a winter wonderland. Cozy, charming, with twinkling lights and a Christmas tree in every window. But let's take a look back. Let's look at how CHF changed lives so quickly. As Poland transitioned to a market economy, CHF co-op members were pioneers. In member-owned democratic organizations, for the first time, they exercised choice and took risk with respect to housing. Some even took the first mortgages in Poland since before World War II. The private sector approach to housing was new. Homebuyer choice was new. And the source of pride and satisfaction was also new. Wojtek Wojtyszek, a Polish architect living in the United States, returned to his homeland to head CHF's program there. In an apartment on the upper floor lives a famous poet. And the space was designed especially for her. He says in the early days, one of his biggest challenges was teaching people they indeed had choices. I remember many meetings with people trying to, to project the idea, now you can decide. And they, because at the beginning, they always came to us and say, what are you going to build for us? And I said, what do you wish to be built? And they could not understand the question. But Wojtyszek says co-op members caught on fast, and their emerging demands had repercussions throughout a swiftly evolving construction industry. The builders learn how to deal with the clients in an honest way. That means uh, uh, deliver what they promised in time within a budget. Before we moved here, it was our biggest dream to have our own place, a little one, but to own. Zbigniew and Orshula are like so many who have been touched by CHF. They say without the organization, they would have paid the same price for half the space they have now. It was a tremendous joy for us and for our children to grow up and create an environment where they could be educated and happy. The idea of being able to acquire your own through your own resources was just tremendously exciting to people. And I think actually contributed in a meaningful way to the tide of change that finally did overtake Poland and made it what it is today. CHF's experience and success in Poland also contributed to a better understanding of what the organization could do. So let's head out to meet some of the remarkable CHF people who are bringing about change all over the globe. First, in Indonesia.